Okay, number two. Mental status screen, describe LOC, appearance and behavior and speech. Okay, so we've trimmed this down here. Just look at LOC and orientation and their appearance. So, what's your name? Jason. Jason, what's your full name? Jason Bill. Okay, where are you at right now? Uh, school. <laughs> what school? <laughs> PA school. At PA school. Uh, you know what uh, season we're in right now? Um, should be fall. Football. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <geez. laughs> okay. That's great. Football. Fantastic. So he's alert. <laughs> He's alert, he's talking to his eyes are open, and uh, uh, he's oriented to person, place, and time. Orient, alert and oriented times three, and his appearance and behavior seem appropriate. Okay, neurological cranial nerves. CN1, test patient's olfactory nerve function. They use coffee gloves and blah, blah, blah. Must test patency first, if not already. So I've forgotten my little cups here, that doesn't make sense. But you guys get the cranial nerve one, olfactory. Make sure, close up right now. And they will check patency first and then test it with their eyes closed. Test one side versus the other. Okay, with different sense. CN2, check visual acuity with corrective lenses if applicable. Old car, old car, 14 inches from mine. Do you wear a correction? No, no, great. Okay, you didn't have that car right there. Right about there. Pull cover up your right eye. If you can read the smallest line, you should be 428739. Great, good. Was it the other eye? Can you read that same line backwards? Nine through seven, eight, two. Okay. Can you cover your eyes? Can you read that same line backwards? Four through eight, seven through nine. Great. Fantastic. So, cranial nerve two is in fact. All right. CN three, four, and six. Evaluate for conjugate movements and nystigmas. Evaluate, evaluate six cardinal positions using eight patterns. Movements should be controlled and slow enough to elicit nystigmas if present. Okay, so when you're doing this, guys, make sure you're not too close. Make sure you're not too far out either. Okay, about 16, 18 inches. Hold it out here. Go ahead and look at my finger and follow my finger. Bring it out. But you don't have to bring it out too far. Just bring it out. And then do an H pattern is just fine. And you're watching both of these eyes, and you're making sure that they're moving equally. That's it. All right, CNB motor. Uh, palpate muscles of mastication during jaw clench, palpate both temporal and master muscles separately. So you're checking them for a uh, start for And then CNV 5 for sensory. for sensory. Test sensory trigeminal nerve using light touch, include an assessment of all yep. three branches bilaterally. Yep. So what I'm doing here yep. is I'm checking with light touch. You can also do this with sharp doll. So you can get your. Um, do sharp doll on either one and do sharp doll on the cranial nerve five distribution point. All right, uh, CN7, inspect for symmetry of facial movement, include muscles in upper and lower face. Raise eyebrows up, squeeze your eyes shut. That's fine. All right, CN8, assess auditory acuity, use mask whisper test or rub fingers together. Either one, you can whisper in your ear or you can you know, swish your fingers back and forth. Okay, go ahead and cover up the right ear. Okay, tell me when you hear this. Okay, good. Make sure they're symmetry. Good. So you had 9 and 10. <coughs> Inspect for a presence of gag flip reflex using blade tongue. Uh, or tongue blade. Have your pen light. Make sure you can see with your pen light. I don't have one right now. Go ahead and gag. Okay, I won't do that for you. Say ah. Okay. Nine and ten. Okay, so you just did ten, which was inspect for midline rise of uvula and soft palate on formation. And eleven, test strength of shoulder shrug and head rotation. Must rotate and not tilt. Look that way. Same thing. Symmetry of strength. Twelve, inspect tongue for midline position without deviation. Have patient protrude tongue. Right. No deviation of the tongue. All right. Pain. Test pains <laughs> and discrimination of sharp versus dull stimulation of paired thermocomal areas including CN5, C5, CN6, T1, T2, radial ulnar and median innervation, lateral and medial aspects of upper forearms, or upper arms form and areas correlated with radial, median, and ulnar innervation. T4, 10, and 12 for nipple hump and umbilicus iliac crest. L3, 4, 5, S1, saphenous and superficial perineal innervation, medial and lateral aspect on each thigh and lower leg, medial aspect of great toe and middle toe, and lower aspect of middle toe. <coughs> you 
safety pin or other suitable tool and use the lightest pressure needed for stimulus. Occasionally substitute the blunt end for the sharp, though every dull stimulus must be followed up with a sharp. The patient's eyes must be closed throughout a Okay, so you want to explain this. By the way, I forgot to mention, can you take your shirt off? Um, you want to explain this to your patient. You want to explain what you're doing as you go through this. And mind you, as you look through this, I put sensory examination here instead of motor examination, that's fine. You move it the way you want to move it. Uh, you can put motor in front of sensory, you can put sensory in front of motor, but I'm doing sensory right here, uh, and we're starting with pain stimulation. Not sharp dull, but pain stimulation. Sharp dull is how you, how you do test for it. I'm also using uh, a, uh, a blunt and a sharp object that I created. Um, out of a tongue blade, you can use whichever you can. You can get uh, a CTA and you can break that and have a sharp as well as a dull, you know, portion for this. Now, I don't want you to draw blood on this individual. You know, you do want to create a sharp stimulus, but you don't want to poke them and really hurt them and, and draw blood with that. And remember, you do want to hit every stimulus, every area with a sharp stimulus, with a pain stimulus. So if you hit a blunt, you, you don't want to, you don't want to Created pattern necessarily, you do want to trick them in some fashion to make sure it's, it, it raises the reliability of your test. But do follow it up with the sharp if you do end up with a doll, and I'll show you. So we've already done the cranial nerve 5 distribution. We just did that. You don't need to do this portion again. Even though I have it in the lab, just understand that that's part of your sharp doll or part of your sensory examination is the head as well. So follow me here, okay? So you feel this? Okay, good. Is that a sharp? Sharp. Or oh, that's, a, that's a sharp, okay? And this, then, is a doll. You feel the difference there? Yep. Okay, so I'm going to have you close your eyes, and you tell me whether you feel a sharp or a doll response. Can you do that for me? Okay, so we're going to go here, here, inside the arm. <laughs> so, since he did doll over here, I'm going to follow this back up. <laughs> Alright, it's sharp, and then I'm going to follow this up with a sharp. Does everybody understand that? Yep. You always get a sharp response. So I'm going to go to T4. And you can follow it up right off automatically if you want. If you go to the ACES around that level for T12. Now what I want you to do is come in to the outside of the thigh. Inside. Outside. Now you get down to the down to the feet. What I'd like you to do is inside the great toe, sharp. Sharp. and little toe, sharp. Sharp. great. Sharp. If they can alternate on their toes, it's great because oftentimes their toes are so numb, right? You can't feel very very well on your toes. That's it. So go through those sharp golf. Include the same pair of dermatoma areas used with pain. Avoid pressure on skin. So you can use a, a Q-tip, a CTA here, and whisk it up, or you can use a, a two by two. All you're doing is light touch. Can you feel this? Okay, great. So close your eyes, and we're going to go through the same areas. And again, we've already done, you know, C5. Okay, so we'll go through and tell me if you feel it. Now you can go a little bit faster. <laughs> now notice as I'm doing this, I'm not putting any pressure, and that's why I like to use this right here. I'm not using any pressure whatsoever on this. When you start to introduce pressure, you're getting away from fine touch or light touch. Okay. Vibratory sense. Test patient's discrimination of vibration over the most distal joint of each thumb and big toe. Use 128 hertz tuning fork. You have with the patient's eyes closed, place vibrating fork over dorsal bony prominence of each joint and ask the patient what they feel. 
and ask them to tell you when the vibration stops and then touch the fork. Uh, touch the fork to something. Did you have a question over here? Sure, yeah. When, we, when you were doing the soft touch, were you testing the same nerve but switching the receptor that you're testing for? Yeah, yeah. That's my question. Same dermatome but different receptor. Instead of the pain receptor, our pressure up. Uh, right. Touch receptor. Yes. Uh -huh. Fine touch or light touch versus pain. Right. Remember, pain comes with. The, uh, the spinal thalamic tract, right, dorsal columns with, uh, you know, fine touch with dorsal columns and spinal thalamic, you're just switching those up. And now we're going to vibratory, which is dorsal columns. Okay. Right. Is that what you're asking? Okay. So use the most distal joint as you can. Vibrate this and use your large uh, tuning fork. And go ahead and open your eyes. Okay. Do you feel that? Yep. Is it vibrating mm -hmm. or is it not? Okay, Thanks. good. Okay, so close your eyes. Okay, so we're going to do this again. Just explain to, to him what you're doing. Tell me, is this vibrating? Yes. Okay, good. Tell me when it stops. Okay. Okay, good. You see how I did that? So don't lightly, just stop it. Just stop it from vibrating. We'll do the same thing on the other side. Most distal joint, okay? Don't need to explain to him. Yep. Vibrating? Mm -hmm. Okay, good. Tell me when it stops. Okay. We're going to do the same thing on the big toe. Okay, good. And we'll do the same thing on the other toe as well. That's vibratory sense. Make sure you place on the dorsal aspect of that interphalangeal, distal interphalangeal joint, and vibrate, stop it, and make sure that they can tell the difference. Great for diabetics. <coughs> for reception, test patient's awareness of body position in space. Grasp only the sides of the distal interphalangeal joint and slightly pull it away from the other digits. Demonstrate the up and down position. Reverse then test with patient's eyes closed. Repeat test two to three times in random fashion on each thumb and great toe. Okay, great. So distal, distal joint again. Okay, look at this. This is down and this is up. I don't want to stretch the heck out of it. I want to do that. Just down and just up, just slightly. So you're going to hold the sides of this joint. Okay, close your eyes. Okay. Move it back and forth. Tell me, is this up or down? Good. Now, if they have a problem, if, you, if they didn't answer correctly here, you can't go to the next joint down and do this. Okay, and, and, and do the, the more proximal joint. You can do the wrist. And, and just keep going proximal if they have a, a deficit. But, if, you know, if they're okay, just stick with that, with that distal joint. When you get down to the toe, again, hold from the sides. And we'll do the other side as well. There's no deficit. Discriminative, uh, discriminative sensation. Uh, number identification. Task recognition of small, familiar object placed in the hand. Plus to use blunt end of pen to draw numbers. Or stereogenesis. Um, test patient's recognition of numbers. Uh, yeah, you must use similar, small, familiar objects such as coin, paper, clip. So everybody's got that correction on there. So go ahead and close your eyes and tell me, what do you have in your hand? So whatever it is, a coin or whatnot. If you do number identification, draw a number. Two, great, and do it in the other hand as well. You don't need to do this on their legs. He's already laying down, our patient's already laying down. We're going to start with the lower extremities. Uh, first, inspecting. And then we'll go to palpation of both the soft tissues as well as the hard tissues, the bones and joints. Okay, and we've kind of we've combined that into one step there. So first off is inspecting. So as you inspect, I want you to look at the lower extremities. I want you to make sure that they're symmetric. I want you to make sure that there's equal hair distribution. Uh, make sure in the skin that there's no nodules, no lesions, things like that. Just inspect. <clears throat> Try to look at the posterior as best you can as they're lying down, but understand that when you get back, you're going to do a spinal examination. I do want you to look at the posterior of the legs as well. That's inspection. Palpitation. Palpate bone, joint, and soft tissues of each extremity throughout. To assess the MTP joints, compress the, uh, the forefoot between your thumb and fingers. Okay. So now we're going to palpate. And understand, I want it's a mental thing here. As you're palpating, appreciate the joints and bony structures as well as the soft tissue structures as, as well. Okay, so start at the hip and what I, I do want you to do is grab the, the hips here and push down at the aces. Give a little squeeze here. Just make sure there's good, you know, pelvic stability there. 
Feel along that inguinal ligament as you go down. Feel the soft tissues of the anterior thighs. Move the patella if you want, but you're feeling those structures. Feel behind the patella, and as I'm feeling behind the patella, I'm feeling for any nodules. I'm feeling for any uh, cysts back there, and both of the both of the knees. Upper thigh, posterior thigh. Come down to the leg. I'm feeling the anterior uh, tibia here, the blade. You can run it up, see if there's any tenderness on there. Feeling his calf. Going down. Feeling the lateral medial malleoli. Achilles tendon back there. Is there any tenderness as I'm going through this? Great calcaneus. You're basically running through all of these bones. You have a good squeeze, metatarsal squeeze. Any pain there? Nope. When I do this, okay, great. And feel the toes. And then same thing on the other leg. Feel all those aspects. And so things I'm looking for: heat, tenderness, uh, pain. And ask them as you're going to tell me if, if I'm hurting in any of these areas. Let me know. Uh, any bogginess, any swelling of the joints, things like that. You want to ensure that you're you're checking those. Could you uh, define bogginess? Bogginess is sponginess, uh, inflammation, swelling, fluid. Is that what your question was? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Uh, a slash P, uh, Rom, hit the knee. All right. Rom, hit the knee, instruct the patient to bend knee to chest and pull firmly against the abdomen. P, a Rom, hip, passively, internally, and externally rotate. His leg is returned to resting position, cut hand over knee to detect. Great. Okay, so for active and passive range of motion, active, go ahead and raise up your right knee to your chest and bring it down. Good. And then you can have them relax. Internal, external rotation, and then as you bring it down to the resting position, put your hand cupped over the knee to feel for any crevice. Do the same thing with that leg right there. Bring it up. Good range of motion actively. External, internal rotation, and then cup it and bring it down. Assess passive range of motion of uh, the ankles, feet, and toes, and include uh, tibio tailor, dorsal flexion and plantar flexion, <coughs> subtalar, stabilize the ankle and test, inversion and inversion of the foot, transverse dorsal, <coughs> stabilize the ankle and test, eversion and inversion of the foot, forefoot, and MT MTP joints, flexitose. Okay. So, kind of confusing there, isn't it? Okay. So, let me show you. When we say stabilize, we're checking the foot, there's a lot of motions that I do want you to check for. So the first one, okay, so tibio tailor, I want you to, to grab the lower leg here, and all you're doing is passively dorsi and plantar flexing that, that foot, that's all you're doing, okay? Next one, grab the ankle, and what you stabilize the ankle, and you're going to invert and evert. Now, can you appreciate what I'm inverting and everting here? I'm inverting and everting the foot, the entire foot, not the forefoot because it can actually go a little bit farther with the forefoot. But I'm stabilizing that, and all I'm doing is this. Kind of the opposite of plantar flexion and dorsiflexion. <laughs> and then, I'm going to stabilize underneath the calcaneus, and the forefoot, I'm going to invert and evert. We call that pronation and supination in the foot. And then what I'm going to do is go ahead and curl in and extend the big toe. Okay. And what I like to do is extend your big toe, We'll do the same thing on this side. So again, plantar and dorsal flexion passively. Inversion, eversion. Grab that calcaneus. Inversion, eversion. The forefoot. And curling in all the toes. Okay? Strength. Assess and grade strength of the major muscle groups of the lower extremities and include hip, flexion, abduction, and adduction, knee flexion and extension, ankle flexion and extension, great toe extension, all may be tested simultaneously except hip flexion. Okay, so what we've done, we've done them in order for a reason. So we've done active and passive range of motion, the hips, the knees, the, the ankles, and the foot, and the toes, okay? So now we're going to test strength. So how do you test strength? You see, go ahead and bring your legs out and bring them in. Good. Bring this leg up and this leg up. Good. We'll go to the knees, kick out. You could do these both at the same time if you'd like, and then bring them back. Bring your foot up, or just your foot, just your foot. 
and then press down against my fingers. Okay, bring your big toe up. Extension, don't let me bring it down. And all I'm doing there is testing the strength of those particular areas. Mind you, there's a lot more you could probably test on, but we're checking. Let's just go. What about hip flexion? Oh, okay. mm -hmm. so, so hip flexion can't do those up simultaneously. What's that? And you cannot do, you're right, you cannot do them simultaneously, you're right. It's kind of odd for your patient. And mind you, you don't have to do all these simultaneously uh, if you don't want to, but that's why I added that in there. Uh, but I didn't add extension. You can't ex add extension here. It's much better if you flip your patient over uh, in the phone position and then check extension of the hip. Okay. Ankle clonus, briskly. Uh, dorsal flex patient's ankle, observing free and close. Okay, so I don't want you to completely bring their, their, their knee in full extension, but just hold their, their ankle here, and I want you to back and forth, back and forth, and then briskly bring it up. And what's going to happen is, and you may feel this in your patients, a couple beats is okay, but it shouldn't be sustained. So he had one beat of, of bonus there. <clears throat> Same thing, which just slightly just relax the patient as best you can and then jerk it upwards and see if you can feel that, that bonus. If they do have the bonus, note the number of beats. If they don't, note that there is no bonus. It's not the same. Uh, muscle skeletal joint, upper extremity, continue to take the seated position. Inspect, inspect, low, uh, inspect the upper extremities. So upper extremities, upper extremities include the shoulder, the upper and lower arm, the elbow, the hands, everything distal uh, to that is what we're expecting. So go ahead and sit up straight. As I'm looking here, I'm looking for particular, land, particular landmarks. So I'm looking at the clavicles as they come off of the sternum, they should be equal. I'm looking at the trapezius coming down from the front, it should be symmetric and equal. And checking on the, on the back side here as well, it should be equal. I'm also going to kind of take a look at the scapula as well, and the scapular spines, they should be equal on both sides for those landmarks. And then just kind of look at the elbows and the hands, everything, one doesn't look grossly longer than the other one if you can. We're not measuring here, but we're just inspecting. Uh, muscle tone, symmetric. Okay, palpate, palpate, bone, joint, and soft tissue of each extremity throughout. So where I want you to start for the upper is I want you to start on that clavicle. So feel that bony clavicle as you come up. Feel the acromion, feel the coracoid. I want you to feel the spine of each of the scapula. And these are the bony projections. And, I, and, and what are you feeling for? You're feeling for heat. You're feeling for tenderness. Any of this hurt back here? I also want you to feel the soft tissues of the shoulder blade, soft tissues in the delt, around the arm, in the front. You don't need to go to the pectoralis. Uh, for that, and then you run down the arms and do this at the same time. Feel the, the triceps, the back of the arm. Any, any tenderness here? Any tenderness here? And, and take those muscle bellies and move them around a little bit. See if there's any pain or tenderness in there. And the elbows, laterally and medially. Check the lateral epicondylitis uh, or epicondylar area for lateral epicondylitis. Rub that area. See if it's any painful to them. Running down the arm, and then for each hand, I want you to feel each finger, each joint of the fingers. Any pain here? into the carpals and the metacarpals, feel each of those areas. You don't want to do a squeeze here. But I'm feeling, what I'm doing is I'm searching for any pain. And sometimes the patient doesn't even know they have something in there. And then you squeeze on, ah, that hurt. Well, what was that? You don't know, but it was painful for the patient. So that's what basically what you're searching for. Of course, if they punch something and you're doing an exam for a boxer's fracture, ah, and that hurts right there, that's an obvious. What I want you to do is search for the unobvious as you're going through this. So there's no pain, there is no tenderness here. Now, there's no bogginess or swelling of these of these joints throughout of the upper extremities. Okay. Uh, a rhomb of the shoulder, assess active range of motion of the shoulder and include flexion, external rotation, and abduction. By having patient raise the arms overhead, place hands behind Up. head with elbows out. And bring your elbows out. Okay. Okay. Extension, internal rotation, and adduction by having the patient place hands behind back individually, attempting to touch the shoulder blade individually. Now you can do these individually, or you can do them both. I didn't put both in there. I would prefer you do them individually. So what I'm looking at in the posterior is where his thumb is. Okay, line that up. Okay, bring it to the front and do the other hand. And so sometimes it's better easy to see if there's symmetry if you're doing one versus the other than both. Either way, I don't care. But that's a gross, really easy way to screen 
for all those ranges of motion of the shoulder now. Okay. Okay, uh, range of motion of the elbow. This is active. Assess active range of motion of the elbow and include flexion, extension, supination, and pronation. So flexion, extension, supination, and pronation. And I prefer to have their elbows kind of like they're tied to the side as you're doing that. Okay. The wrist. Assess active range of motion of the wrist and include flexion, extension, ulnar, and radial deviation. Flexion, extension, ulnar, and radial deviation. And make sure that they're symmetric as the face is going through. And the fingers. Assess active range of motion of the hand and fingers and include extension, flexion, abduction, and adduction of each joint. Okay. So flexion, extension, abduction, adduction. Spread the fingers apart and bring them, bring them together. Strength. Assess and break strength of the major muscle groups of the upper extremities and include shoulder, shoulder abduction and adduction, biceps flexion, triceps extension, wrist flexion and extension, fingers abduction, adduction, flexion, and opposition of both index and little fingers and grasping arms. Yeah. Getting ahead of you here. Bring your wrist out. So did you see that? So abduction, adduction. So bring your arms up. Don't let me press down. Bring them down just slightly. Don't let me bring them out. Good. Your arms just like that. Don't let me press them down. Okay, good. Press down. Testing strength for the triceps and the biceps. Bring your wrist out. Okay, there's different ways you can do this. Go ahead and bring your wrist up. Go ahead and bring your wrist down. Whichever way you test for the strength of that. Don't need to test radial and ulnar deviation here. Spread your fingers apart. And what I'd like you to do for this is test abduction adduction of different finger groups. Don't let me press these in. Good. Just different fingers. Three, two or three different finger groups is just fine, I'm trying to press them in. And then what I'd like you to do is, is touch your, your thumb, and don't let me bring my fingers out. Okay, touch your, your pinky, don't let me bring my fingers out. Okay, so that's checking opposition, strength of opposition. Remember, you can also do this as, try to bring your thumb down. You can do it this way as well, try to bring your thumb down. Whichever way you'd like to do, but you're checking for opposition strength. And it's five out of five for him, and it's equal on both sides. And grip. And grip. Sorry about that. Grab, grab my fingers. And grip. And grip is just checking gross, you know, reflection of all the fingers. <clears throat> uh, neurologic uh, deep tendon <clears throat> reflexes. You evaluate symmetry and grade of both upper and lower extrem extremity deep tendon reflexes. Uh, biceps and brachioradialis, which is C5, C6. Okay. So use your reflex hammer, okay? And preferably... The pointed end of your reflex hammer is best as you're doing this. And I would like you to use your finger to be able to tap on. So use your finger as kind of a target, or your thumb, whichever. And you want to find that tendon. Remember, you're hitting the tendon here, not the muscle. You find that tendon. And just have your patient relax as best you can. And what you're doing is you're feeling as well as watching. Sometimes you don't always see a reflex, but you feel it with your finger. And I don't know, did anybody see that? Yes. I felt it. And, and you may not, but make sure you put your finger right over that tendon and hit it. And you felt that? So I felt that, but you didn't really see it very well. Okay? But what I did notice was that these were symmetric on both sides. Okay? They were symmetric on both sides. And I'd call them two plus. Which one was that? For biceps. Okay, for biceps. Okay? So I'm going to skip over to the triceps here. Again, put your thumb on that tendon and then briskly hit it as best you can. Yeah. <laughs> and notice how I'm hanging his elbow. You can do this this way, either way, or you can have it sitting off to the side and you can hit it this way uh, if you'd like. And to the other side, just hang with your elbow as best you can. C5, C6. Now, take a look at his arm. What you're doing is you're hitting in this area right here. In this area right here. Okay? And you're hitting that tendon. So, what I like to do is place my, my hand on his thumb just like this and just lightly hit it. And you'll get what you'll get is a movement of that thumb, is what you're looking for, is the movement of that thumb. 
Another way you can do this is to hold the thumbs if you'd like, and I've seen this being done. Whichever, if you can feel it, but you're checking that brachial radialis. For the patellar, I'm not jumping ahead, am I? I'm not sure I try the triceps. No, we'll try that later. Uh, for the patellar tendon, you don't need to put your finger there, but just you know, hit it right there. It's it's hard to miss the the patellar tendon. Okay. For the Achilles, again, Achilles pretty big. Put your underneath the foot so you can feel it. Oftentimes you'll see it as well. And just a light tap is all you need to do. For the patellar, planter, planter. <laughs> Rub along the lateral aspect of the bottom of the foot and make sure that the toes either don't move or they curl downward. Just make sure they don't curl upward. So it's not rapid? Like, no, uh, just like it doesn't have to be very hard either. But I'm just making sure that it, they're not curling upward. Okay. All right. Uh, neurologic cere uh, cerebellar exam. Feel the shin. Assess heel to shin, noting smoothness and accuracy of movements. Ask patient to place one heel on the opposite knee and run it down the shin to the big toe and back up to the knee with eyes closed. Okay, so bring the, the heel of one foot up to the knee and close your eyes and bring it down along, making sure it stays with the skin, touch your big toe and bring it back up. Okay, good. Nice and smooth and it stayed straight. It wasn't, you know, going back and forth. He didn't overshoot his knee or anything like that. Do the same with your thing with the other, uh, other leg. All the way down and then back up. Kind of an odd exam, isn't it? That's the heel to shin. All right. I'm <laughs> it's always better when you have pantyhose on. Yeah. I try to wear those on the weekends. These examinations, you might want to explain to your patient that these are kind of seem kind of odd, but follow me here. Or really, we really are testing things. All right. Rapid alternating movements. Observe the speed, rhythm, and smoothness of movements, which is that big long word. Uh, Die this. Just uh, that, that word. Mm -hmm. Demonstrate for patient, ensuring that their hand is raised completely off the up off the thigh between movements. Urge patient to repeat these alternating movements as rapidly as possible. Then have patient perform using your feet by rapidly tapping against your palm. Okay, so what I want you to do is tap, bring them all the way up, turn them all the way over, and then tap with the back of your hand, bring them all the way up, and do this, and keep doing it. A little bit faster. And they can do one at a time if you'd like. <laughs> now for the feet, tap both your feet on the, on the bottom, just keep going. Somewhat difficult to do with the feet, but notice that he was moving them simultaneously. So that's rapid, that's REMs. Alright, finger to nose, assess bilaterally for dysmetria. Um, first, ask patient to touch your finger, then his nose, alternate, alternately several times while you while you move your finger about slowly ensuring that their arm is fully extended with each movement. Then hold your finger in one position, have them touch their nose, and then your finger alternately. Do this a few times with eyes open, then repeat several times with eyes closed. Okay, great. So you're doing a good job, by the way. Go ahead and extend, uh, touch your, no, yeah, not you. <laughs> touch your nose, touch your nose, and then touch my finger. Okay, good. So it's, it's just about, bring it, it doesn't have to be fully extended, but just so they're extending, you know, somewhat all the way out. Okay, touch your nose, and then touch my finger again. Keep doing that. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. Okay, so see what I'm doing? I'm alternating a few times in different locations. Don't do this, okay, because it kind of throws it up. And I realize how I wrote that. It kind of shows you to move it slowly, but just understand, move it in different locations and hold it in place as you do that. Now the next thing we're going to do is I'm going to have you do the same thing. Touch my finger, and then touch your nose, and touch it again. Keep going. Now stop. Okay, now close your eyes. Now I want you to touch my finger again. <laughs> but that was great, because you saw his brain in action. He went, and he stopped, and he realized, without looking, where it was. That's what you're checking for. If somebody has a problem with that, they're going to overshoot and they really cannot find the location. It does not have to be like this. It can be like this. It can be like this. But it should not be like this. Okay? And that can be found in the dark. That's what you're checking for. All right? Gates. Inspect for balance, coordination, and muscle strength while patient walks short distance using different gates. Just conclude. Normal walk on heels, on toes, and tandem. Okay, turn around and come back. Okay, so that's a normal walk, nice and coordinated. 
nice and controlled. I want you to walk that way on your toes. Have a really good fun. Okay, good. So I'm assessing strength here. He's got good strength in his calves. All the way back. And we're going to do the same thing on your heels. So check your heels. <laughs> Six inches. Six inches, yeah. Okay, okay great. So nice and controlled. He's got good strength. He's not flossy. He has good strength there. And then what I want you to do is tandem walk. So remember, tandem walking can sometimes bring out subtle problems there, subtle attacks here. So very controlled. You can go ahead and stop and come on back and tandem walk. And then on your toes. And then on your toes. And then on your heels. We're just having fun now. <laughs> <laughs> yes. <laughs> okay, Romberg. Assess patient's ability to maintain a, an upright position without and with eyes closed. Have patients fir have patient first stand with feet together and eyes open, then close eyes for 20, 30 seconds without support. Must be prepared to protect the patient from fall if balance if balance from a fall if necessary. Okay. So bring your feet together. Okay, and so just stand there. Got your bearings? Close, close your eyes. So make sure that they don't fall. And if they're swaying a little bit with their eyes open, you might want to stand right here just to make sure. If you're on a ship and it's swaying, you might want to stand here and make sure. So you want to do this for about 30 seconds. And if you wait 15 seconds and verbalize it, guys, for the lab purposes, I'm fine with that. Just make sure you're holding the stand here for 30 seconds watching it. He's got pretty good balance here, yeah? Mm -hmm. So this is not a positive rhombus. Go ahead and open up your eyes. Okay. Uh, muscle skeletal spine exam. Inspect. Inspect. Oh, did that feel? I'm sorry. I'm not yeah, okay. Pronator drift. Inspect for cortical spinal tract lesions of the uh, contralateral hemisphere by assessing the patient's ability to hold arm position. Have patient stand for 20 30 seconds with both arms extended forward. Palms up and eyes closed may be tested with patient either standing or seated position. So remember, standing or seated position for pronator drift. It's not related to the Romberg at all. I want you to bring your arms out, extend them fully with your palms up, and bring them a little bit closer together is fine. Okay, good. Now that he sees that, I want you to close your eyes and I want you to maintain that. Notice I don't care that his feet are together with this. This is not a test for balance. And what I'm looking for is that he, he maintains this. He maintains this. It doesn't move. It doesn't drift, you know, or pronate and curl in or anything like that. It's staying right where it is. And then what you can do also is go ahead and do this. And notice how he brings him right back up to the same position. That's a good thing. Go ahead and that. All right. And don't try to knock him over. Either. Muscle, muscle skeletal spinal. Inspect, inspect soft tissues and joint alignment, specifically noting curvature of spine, and some of your back, inspect both laterally and posteriorly. Okay, what I'm going to have you do is actually turn obliquely just right there. So as I'm looking again, inspecting, we're inspecting the spine, but we're also inspecting the back of the leg, something we didn't look at before. So I'm looking at a spine, making sure it's nice and straight up, okay, that there's no curvature, scoliosis to it. I'm looking at his shoulder blades, I'm looking at his trapezius, and making sure that they're equal and symmetric. I'm also looking at his posterior aces. Uh, as far as his dimples, making sure they're, they're equal on both sides. I'm also looking at the lines in his popliteal space, making sure that those lines are nice and equal. Calves are equal, that he's got good symmetry all the way down. Okay, palpitation. Bone and soft tissue, palpate the spine's processes, and a pair of vertebral muscles of the entire spine. All right, so I want you to feel each vertebrae, each spinous process as you're going down. You're checking for that heat, you're checking for that tenderness, you're also checking for step-off deformities as you go down. From the neck all the way down, the lumbar spine to the sacrum. I'm also checking the, the spinous process, any tenderness here as I'm running through this. Nope. There's no spasms. Spasms sometimes you can see, sometimes you can feel them. Sometimes you spontaneously cause them by rubbing and you'll see them spasm up if they have a problem with their first spinal muscles. Okay. So there's no heat, there's no tenderness. No asymmetry. Uh, okay. Yes. Um, anything down that, all the way down, all the way down. And then what you want to do is each side of that you want to check those spinal processes, those muscles, the latissimus, all the way down. You want to check those areas and feeling for tenderness, looking and feeling for spasms. All right. Uh, active range of motion spine. Excess active range of motion of the thorough the lumbar. Orco lumbar spine and include flexion, extension, lateral bend, and rotation. <coughs> the pelvis is stabilized while testing. Except flexion. Okay, last step here. 
Okay, so we're just checking a range of motion. I'm going to have you first flex and try to touch your toes here. So notice as he's flexing, I'm not standing back here, but as, as but I am looking at his spine and making sure as he flexes that that spine stays nice and straight, and he's touching his toes. Come up just a little bit more. So if he can only get right there, how many inches from his toes is he? So three inches, so I'd mark that, three inches to the toes of flexion. Go ahead and come on back. Okay, what I want you to do is stabilize the pelvis and then come back, bend backwards, just your spine. Mm -hmm. So check, and it doesn't have to come back very far, but you're just checking that he can do this. I also want you to twist to the left and twist to the right. And I'm stabilizing his pelvis as he's doing that. Now I want you to bend and try to touch your knees on the left. Your knee on the left. Not like that. Stay straight. Right, and then come to the other side. Now, what I'm more concerned with is not the degree in which he's doing this, but that it's the same on both sides. This is a gross assessment, guys. Just take it as what it is. You're just checking this. It's as important as for acute diagnosis as it is for a follow-up, and you can mark this on your nose. And that is it. Any questions?